Our company was founded in 1921 by my grandfather, John M. Hemmer. He started building homes. He built his first one, sold it, paid everybody off. He had a little money left over, and he continued that. He wasn't an educated man, but he was a smart man. He became a registered architect, one of the first 50 in the state of Kentucky. I don't know how old I was, still in school, grade school, I guess. And one day I was down there cleaning the windows. When you get this finished, Johnny, he said, come on in, I want to talk to you. They all used to call me Johnny, the people did. He said, I want to give you some good advice. I know you're going to go somewhere yet someday. The way you work and so busy, boys like that and girls like that, they'll get up in a world. In the 30s, uh, my grandfather started shifting from speculative home building to build the suit. In the 40s, started doing commercial projects, gas stations, and other small projects like that. After the Second World War, my father continued his engineering education at University of Cincinnati. My uncle Jack Curtin joined the company full-time as a carpenter. And then later in the 50s, Bill Hammer uh, joined the company. And so the second generation was launched. In the 60s, they started design build construction. The Northern Kentucky Industrial Park had been kicked off and our firm was selected to design and build many of the factories that were initially started out there. I joined John M. Hammer Construction Company in 1976. And the point I made to my father is, why shouldn't we build something for our own investment? Take the land, and make it a working asset. At the end of 1981, a decision was made by the three owners to start closing down the John M. Hammer Construction Company. My father and I started the Paul Hammer Construction Company January 1, 1982. The 90s were traumatic. We went from 50 million to 20 million within a year. Everything we had built was at risk. But we worked through this we re-engineered ourselves. We went from a trade-based construction company to construction management. From a financial standpoint, we started reevaluating risk a little differently. We got traction again. By the late 90s, we were approaching 100 million. 2008 was the mother of all recessions. We had five projects under contract. They were all stopped at the beginning of 2009. But we put our heads down, we did our job, uh, we looked forward, and all along our building service group continued to provide facility services to companies that continued to need it on a daily basis. Today we take care of 200 or more buildings, we provide daily preventive scheduled maintenance, we do capital improvements, we do renovations, and we do refitting. It's not the size of the company, you know, it's, it's how do you be successful and how do you create a culture for people to grow and enjoy the work that they do and be proud of the work that they do? I want to be successful. I want to have integrity. I want people to say, oh, that's, I know those hammers. They're good people. And they build good buildings. <laughs>